Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It has been almost exactly a year since NVIDIA released its RTX GI technology, which allows you to have global illumination without having to have an RTX card and runs much more efficiently. That being said, a year ago when we got that original release, it was much more complicated to install than you would hope for. But let's get on with installing RTX GI the easy way as NVIDIA provides it today. First off, if you haven't already, load up your Epic Games Launcher, go to Unreal Engine and Marketplace. Once you're there, you're gonna search for RTX GI and this is going to pop up in the list. Once we click on that, we're gonna be presented with an external link. This is not built in quite as easily as the plugins that you're used to getting where it injects it directly, but it's going to take you to an external page. And once you're on that page, you're going to have access to it. Now it is worth mentioning that in order to use this, you have to be running Unreal Engine 4.27 or later. So make sure that is the case. And you do have to have an NVIDIA 10 series graphics card or newer. Just to clarify, you don't have to have an RTX card in order to use this. To actually download the plugin, I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit, agree to the terms and download. You do not have to apply to the early access program. All you need to do is get the binary download zip file and we're going to drop that off in the appropriate folder for Unreal Engine 4.27 or newer in order to get it up and running. Once you have that downloaded, go ahead and extract it and go into that resulting folder. And once you see a file structure similar to this, you know you're in the right spot. Basically what you want to do is you're going to take this RTX GI folder and copy it and you're going to navigate to wherever Unreal Engine 4.27 is installed. So in this case, I have it on the F drive, program files, Epic Games, UE 4.27, engine, plugins, runtime, and finally we get to NVIDIA. And all you need to do is copy and paste that RTX GI folder inside of here, and you can see I already have that right there. From here, go ahead and start up a new Unreal Engine project, and we'll go about the process of getting the plugin set up and running. All right, for the sake of time, I've made some minor changes to the starter map. I've deleted the table and the chairs, and I made some walls just out of cubes. And what I've done here is just made three different rectangular lights that are facing the different walls. And you can see there's no light reflection anywhere. And if I go ahead and look at my lights in the scene, our skylight and our light source are both unchecked for effects world. So we're not gonna be getting any lighting contribution from them. And that's why everything is completely black. So a few settings we need to adjust. I've already done them in this sample project. Let's go ahead and take a look. So under project settings, you need to go to RHI and make the default DirectX 12 and also check the box DirectX 11 and 12 SM5. From there, you also need to go to ray tracing and make sure that's on. Again, this doesn't need to be a RTX card. It does need to be, I believe, a, a GeForce 1060 or above, but anything of that nature will work fine, but you do need to check ray tracing on here. On your level in particular, you're gonna want to go to world settings and Search for force pre-computed lighting, turn that off. So force no pre-computed lighting. So we're not using any light maps that were baked before. And once you check that for the first time, you need to go up to build and build lighting only, and that will get rid of those baked light maps from your scene. Once that's done and you turn off the starter lights, you should get a setup pretty close to what I have here. And of course, before you restart, you're going to need to go to plugins, just do RTX, and here's our RTX. GI, Global Illumination Plugin, that is enabled. Again, once you enable these, you're gonna probably have to restart, and it'll take a little bit because it has to do some more processing for the ray trace shaders. Once you're restarted and you have those plugin and project settings set up correctly, all we need to do from here is a couple of things. There's a couple of console variables you have to enable in order for RTX GI to function correctly, and the first is this right here called our Global Illumination Experimental Plugin. We need to set that to one, so we'll go ahead and do that. And nothing's happening yet. <laughs> because we also have to do the RTX GI itself to one. So I'll go ahead and tilde key again, control V to paste. I'm gonna set this to one. And we don't have anything yet because we don't actually have the volume that processes the RTX GI in there quite yet. So we need to go under volumes and we're just gonna search DDGI volume and drag that into our scene. Once they ha we have that in there, let's go ahead and resize the volume to fit what we need. And you can actually already see even with the small volume, it's already starting to give us global illumination inside that bounding box. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scale this up uniformly and you can see already we have really nice global illuminated light in our scene. So I go and press G to turn off our icons in the scene here 
and we go to our DDGI volume, what it's actually doing, we can enable and disable the volume itself so we can see what a big difference it's making. But if we scroll down, we can choose visualize probes, and this is where it's taking its global illumination samples from. So each one of these orbs is getting hit by rays, and that's how it's contributing in each spot to the global illumination. There are some options for rays per probe. You can turn this way up. Even though RTXGI is quite fast, turning these way up will slow things down, and also upping the probe count will slow things down as well. You may have probes that get near the wall and will turn themselves off, and it is pretty smart. You can see all these probes out here are not enabled because there's no light contribution actually happening to them. So it's pretty smart and only using them where they need to, and sometimes they'll get really close to walls and be X'd out trying to predict how you actually want to use this lighting. So I'll go ahead and turn off the probes, and from here on out, any setup that we have, and these sharp lines are just based on where the rectangular lights are set up here. We could obviously soften those out and adjust those out to be a little bit better. But from here on out, anything we, we put in here is going to get hit by that bounce lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and select our red rectangular light. I'm going to uncheck Effects World. And now we get a more stronger sense and presence of the blue light and the green light. And if I was to go ahead and just grab something simple, like a basic cube, and drag it in, this is now going to be getting hit with those lights from the different directions. So if I go ahead and look on this side, even though this light is just hitting the wall, it's bouncing off and affecting this area. And the same thing goes for the blue. We do have the, the light just hitting here. It is reflecting off and hitting here. So as you can see, this is very simple to set up, and it gives a huge difference in quality of lighting. If I go ahead and turn on this red light again, and now I'll go ahead and go to my DDGI volume, enable volume, disable volume, it's going to give you that nice fill light that otherwise you just lose all the detail in here. I can't see anything here, but as soon as I enable this volume, I actually get a sense of what's in here and how it's being lit and so on and so forth. And it's extremely fast. So this is a very, very simple tutorial, but if you did see my previous video, you'll appreciate this one because it's much easier and much more accessible to integrate RTX GI into your project. And as a last little bit, if you don't have an NVIDIA based graphics card 10 series or above, you can still bake this light in as you're doing your work, as long as it's authored on one of those cards. So if I scroll down under GI volume, there's an option for runtime static. If I go ahead and check this, no matter what device I'm running on, whether it's a VR device or an AMD card, this lighting will still work as long as it's authored on an NVIDIA card. So really, really cool technology. I'm definitely thankful to NVIDIA for finally making this much easier to incorporate along with DLSS 2.x, and we should see much more support for this in future releases of games and visualizations and so forth. Thank you everyone for watching. Dig into this. It's really cool stuff, and I'll see you on the next Johnny How-To.